Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is Tuesday, July 6th, 2021. My name is Terry Hunter. I am an angel therapy practitioner, intuitive astrologer, empowerment coach, and Reiki master. And if you don't know what an angel therapy practitioner is, it is somebody who works within the angelic realm with your guides and your angels in order to facilitate guidance and a support and solace for you as you walk through the human experience. So to that end, what I have done is created a weekly, I say weekly because every once in a while I miss it, but weekly, pick your angel card reading. So what you're gonna do is you're going to pose a question. And I think that the most valuable way to pose the question is to say, how can I best influence the situation? How can I be um, productive or what kind of attitude can I adopt so that I can help foster the outcome to whatever situation it is that you are asking about? And then allowing your intuition to guide you as to which reading will be most appropriate for the answer to your question. So I'm going to do three different spreads. I will put the timestamp in below within the comments. And again, just allowing your intuition to lead you. So for those of you that picked angel reading number one, our first card is the She-Wolf. And it talks about unleashing the wild within. And this is not about acting crazy. This is not about truly howling at the moon, but going to a more primal energy. Animals do not use words to communicate. Everything they do comes from an energy. It comes from being able to read the environment, the dynamics from a place that does not use um, human communication. So we're going to look at the moon. The moon represents our emotions, our intuitive body, um, our sense of self-nurturing. And I think that's all coming into play this week as you walk through whatever challenge, whatever you're into asking about. The in the foundational position, for those who have picked angel reading number one, is Astera saying to reach for the stars with your dreams and desires and to not compromise with your intentions. And focus is the very seedling with which we manifest. And as we're aware of our focus, we are more um, effective in our communication. The human will tend to focus on the challenge, on the problem, on the pushing the rock uphill. Whereas animals tend to, and we don't know this because obviously I don't speak dog, I don't speak cat, I don't speak bird, but my observation of nature is it tends to focus on the solution or the objective or the goal, hence in the hunting cycle. So rather than looking at the obstacle, oh, where do I find that gazelle? You'll see the lioness wait within the tall grass for the animal to come across the path. I say that because we're talking about the she-wolf unleashing a primal instinct. And Astera is asking you to reach for the stars with your dreams and desires with your focus, not necessarily looking into the Serengeti to see if the animal is actually crossing your path yet. In your opportunity or your obstacle is the dragon representing a cool, calm energy and Shanti representing an inner peace. Um, an inner peace is not necessarily to say that there's an absence of challenges here, but going back to the primal energy, the primal intuition that says, if I have the ability to dream it, I have the ability to co-create it. And my job as the human is to use my focus and my calm power and strength of my focus to engage all the energies and resources within this universe to align, to create, and to make my, ma my object manifest in my world. So in the angel's advice is here, is fear, and Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael is asking you to have the courage to look at your fear and telling you essentially that it is your calm strength that will actually manifest your desire much more effectively. What fear does when it's out of alignment is it pulls our focus into the problem. 
And as a result of focusing in on the problem, we are inadvertently giving life to the laws of attraction and bringing more of those um, challenging dynamics into our experience. So in the final position, we have the protection card and the angel of marriage, Daniel. You can hear my dog is barking or growling at something on the street. I apologize for that. I wanna offer this. For those of you that picked angel reading number one, if indeed your focus is or your desire is to find a mate, part of Daniel's energy is to look at my history, the story I tell myself about the intimate process, about the process of two humans coming together. And the protection card is representing that as you're aware of your focus and alignment to what you want in the way of, of partnership, in the way of connection, then you are more likely to manifest the elements of your desire. So let me be a little bit more clear. I feel like what the she-wolf is saying is to really, she's closing her eyes. She's using the pack, the power of the pack, which is the, the wolf. It may look like it's engulfing her, but what it's doing is it's working in coordination with her to look to her intuition, allowing her to trust her instincts, knowing that her focus and her ability to stay in that place to stay uncompromisingly in my focus of what I want, to be calm and to be self-assured, to allow a sense of peace to come over me as I know that it is my courage to step through my fears. Your fears, 99.9% .9 of the time, the fear is a projection into the future based on what you've experienced in the past. And that's what Daniel is, is representing. Daniel is representing a previous story and you're now being in some ways protected from that story because now you have an opportunity to move on to a new platform because you're more aware that your focus is the impetus for your manifestation. All right, let's go on to angel reading number two. I pulled as the main idea and the main theme for angel reading number two, I pulled the spirit fox. Trust your talents in changing times. Um, the fox is one of the most hunted animals. It has been hunted many, many eons for its fur. It's also become quite adaptable. The fox can adapt to the urban environment as well as the rural forest environment. It's able to traverse through the day and through the night. We have sayings like sly as a fox. And I think for those of you that picked angel reading number two, again, I wanna, I, I, I referenced this in the first reading, there is a primal nature. There is a, a inner energy that when the human and the human mind gets out of the way, that primal energy is like a beacon leading us towards where we wanna go. In the foundational position, we have the swan representing transformation, trusting my intuitive gifts. And then we have Grace and Antoinette, which represents compassion. I feel like that this is really more about the ugly duckling turning into the swan as I demonstrate compassion. And in many ways, I can go back to the fox being adaptable and flexible. Maybe there's a story or a situation that's going on for you right now. And there is a, a normal way to react to that situation. And at the same time, as you trust your talents, in these changing times, there may be more doors, more windows, more opportunities opening up for you that your compassion through the transformation will allow for. In the opportunity or the obstacle, we have Chantal, the angel of romance, and we have the wind fairy. So I would have to say that this could very well be about intimacy, about the viability of intimacy. And is your mind going to continue to go back into the experiences of you, you've had, the experiences you hear from your friends and intellectualize yourself right out of romance? Because again, this is an opportunity to trust a transformation going from one challenging dynamic into a much more beautiful and more fulfilling dynamic. Because in the angel's advice, we have Serena, the angel of abundance, and we have the spider. For me, the spider is a relationship card. 
It is the cooperation between the fly or whatever insect gets into the web that then becomes the nourishment for the spider. So as you start to look at the opportunity or the obstacle being your viewpoint of romance, of the viability of romance, of your um, history in romance, as you become more serene and turn over the dynamic to the angels, meaning this, I'm ready to put myself out into the world in a place where I am meeting people that are aligned to me people that are aligned to my beliefs, people that are aligned to the things I find joyous, people that are aligned to the things that I believe in the way of principles and philosophies within life. And as I have compassion for myself and for the others in my life that don't necessarily agree with me or my evolution, I find myself becoming more loving or feeling more loving because now I'm looking at things from a different perspective. I'm understanding that relationships and healthy relationships are a combination of my intention and then my willingness to allow God and the angels to align my vibration to something that is much more fruitful for me, uh, to th something that matches my own spiritual growth as I've walked through this human life path. Because in the final position, there's a, there is Merlina saying you're confused and indecisive, and there's the choice card in the form of the mystery. And I say this, um, while this becomes rather a challenging end to this week's reading, it's not as challenging as it would appear to be, because the choice is, do I need to be confused? Do I need to do more human research? Or am I like the grand wizard Merlin and have a certain amount of of magic within myself as I implement my own talents, allow for my own transformation and trusting of my intuitive body. I think for those of you that picked angel reading number two, I don't know if I think that Chantal is representing a romance outside of yourself as much as opening up to the ideas of alignment with more humans that resonate with you and your personal beliefs your personal principles of how you want to run your life. And up until now, you may have felt a little bit like you were traversing this by yourself, you know, running from being hunted down by those that don't believe in you. But as you trust your talents, I believe you'll see that these feathers will indicate the opportunity for wisdom that comes through a bigger sight and knowing that you have to trust your heart in order to truly thrive in the human experience. And that's what I believe will ultimately be your decision and keep and clear you from any confusion. All right, let's go on to our third and final reading. Angel reading number three. I pulled the direction guardian. Choose your path. This is interesting because when I look at this and the very first thing I see is the world card in the tarot deck, which has the lion and the bull and the the bird of flight, and then the angelic realm. When, when it's asking you to choose your path, I think this is about a focus. It's about aligning not to an obstacle and maybe not even to the outcome that you want, but rather stay committed on a journey, on willingness to walk the path. So in the foundational position, we have Vanessa, the angel of faith or fear, and then we have the restriction card. So let's say those of you that picked angel reading number three are experiencing a block right now. And astrologically, there are dynamics that would support a block right now. We have many planets in retrograde. Are you gonna stop everything? Or are you going to look at this pause, this restriction, this stop as an opportunity to allow the universe to bring in elements that you maybe could not do yourself or not um, as succinctly or as magically aligned to things that you might have struggled to, to birth. Because in your opportunity and or your obstacle is the partnership card and Yvonne asking me to be vulnerable to this partnership. I think this partnership is with spirit as I choose my direction. As I walk down a path I'm unfamiliar with, and I have to continually ask myself, is this viable? 
Is it viable because I can see it or is it viable because I have faith in it? I truly believe that the heart is the doorway to the soul. And if the heart has a yearning for something, the soul has a contract to experience it. So in the angel's advice, we have Archangel Raphael offering us a healing, a reconciliation, and then we have the ego. And here, this is where I'm going to say I'm edging God out. And actually, it confirms for me that it's time for me to be vulnerable to my partnership with spirit. Because let's say that you're choosing uh, a direction where you've said, I want to be in a romantic relationship. I want to walk a path with another human being and feel connected. And yet everything in your history has been disruptive or not in alignment. At this moment, your job is to take a moment to decide if your history is going to be your future or if you have the faith and the courage because Vanessa is a very strong energy to believe in something you haven't experienced. And then in doing so, give spirit an opportunity to birth this type of relationship. It could be friends, it could be lovers, it could be family. I think it's partnership with other humans that you potentially crave. And yet spirit is saying, go through us first, because that way you will be able to identify where your ego is edging God out. So let's say this, you have a certain relationships with people and you care about them, but you want them to change because their behavior is somehow not in alignment with yours or making you feel hurt. That's where you might be edging God out because maybe that relationship, while it's viable on one level, it may not be the big enchilada that you're looking for. So rather than trying to put a square peg into a round hole, you allow it to be what it is. And then spirit says, oh, you're being vulnerable. So now we have an opportunity to truly bring an illumination as to what a relationship that may have been distasteful has been because... In the final position, Francesca says, what do you desire? Visualize that. Negativity will block your progress. And the owl is the two sides of one coin. Everything is good news, bad news. Every thought is two thoughts. There's the, the in, initial idea of, a, of, a, of something that seems very exciting. And then there's the boomerang. How will I get there? Where will the resources be? Am I able? So overall, the direction guardian is asking you to choose a path, not telling you to choose which path to choose, but to be committed on that path and to stand faithfully regardless of restriction, to remember your connection with the divine and be vulnerable to it so that you will not allow the ego to edge out any illuminations that God and the angels will bring to you so that you can truly step on the path of co-creation and understand the ebb and the flow of both sides of the coin. Every time you walk through a challenge, it may be annoying to walk through it initially, but it has the elements, the ingredients, and the components to empower you. So the next time you come to a challenge, you understand your own strength and ability to conquer that challenge. Okay, that's it for this week. I want to thank you all for watching. I will unabashedly ask you to hit the like button, to share the videos, to come back next week and watch more. My intention is to produce more content. I will say I've had some challenges lately with my internet connection and other little disruptive things, but I'm going to persevere. I'm not going to let any restrictions get in my way and I will be back next week. Hopefully before next week with your July heavenly horoscopes. All right, everybody. Again, that's me, Terry Hunter. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my world. I hope you find benefit here. Sending lots of love to you. Peace.